When we talk about Mashiach, we refer to him as Melech HaMashiach, the king, the monarch. And to some people, that's a little bit unsettling. Why would we want the restoration of the monarchy? So I have to explain that we know that all forms of government are imperfect. In fact, there's a famous quip of Winston Churchill, who quoted someone else, who said that democracy is the worst form of government besides all the others, which acknowledges the deficiency in every system, even in the vaunted democracy, because in a democracy, you never know who is voting for whom in terms of what they know about the candidate. Sometimes a vocal and militant minority can control the majority. So no system of government is complete and perfect. Neither is the monarchy the way it was in the past. The monarchy, however, in the future is gonna be the ideal monarchy, the one that started with Moses. What's, what makes a monarch ideal is two things. Number one, he is chosen by God. And number two, he is chosen by the people. Now Moses was chosen by God. There was no nation at that time to accept him as the leader, but even God had a hard time. It took him a full week to impress upon Moses that he has to be the liberator of the Jewish people and he has to assume the position of leadership because in Hasidic philosophy, we're taught that the power of leadership for someone who's a real leader is very deeply embedded in the psyche, in the soul. And it requires a lot of effort to elicit that power of leadership. Now, if we skip a few hundred years and we go to the king, the beginning of the Davidic dynasty, King David himself, King David was anointed by Shmuel. Shmuel was a prophet sent by God to anoint him. Yet, even though he was anointed by God, chosen by God, he did not become king immediately. It took time before his own small circle of several hundred people embraced him and accepted him as king. And then it spread to the entire tribe of Yehuda. And then finally, the entire Jewish nation accepted King David as their king and he unified the people. So that we see from here that a king has to be ordained, anointed, you could say, by God himself. God has to choose him and give him those powers, that potential. But at the same time, he's not a dictator. He can't impose himself. The people have to embrace him. Now, the whole idea of that there's a concept of a king in Judaism is based on a biblical verse in the book of Deuteronomy, which commands us to appoint a king. When we come into Israel, the Talmud says, based on this biblical verse, the Jewish people had three unique obligations. The first was to establish a monarchy. The second was to eliminate the wicked nation Amalek, the genocidal nation Amalek. And the third is to build the Beit HaMikdash, the Holy Temple. The whole idea of a king on one level is simply to make sure that there's law and order, that there's no anarchy. It says in Ethics of the Fathers, if not for the fear of government, people would swallow each other alive. So you need a structure. But the deeper reason and the higher reason, and even in this itself there are several levels, is that the king is supposed to be the highest spiritual figure whose whole being is surrendered to God. But the ideal king, which began with King David and continued through the ages through various Jewish leaders, although it was not overt, when Mashiach finally is on the scene to take us out of exile, Mashiach will express that power.